Okay, good evening all and a very warm welcome to the Tree of Pets 2022. Imagine we are midway through Pets 2022. I trust that the sessions are equipping you with the necessary tools for a successful year. I know you will enjoy the journey. The plan is to have more general sessions during the Rotary Year arranged by the, our district training committee as well as their AGs. I wish to especially acknowledge DG Sonia. I know that she may be at another meeting, but I'm sure that half of her ears is in our meeting. And you know, when DG Sonia was in Guyana, she was, I think, intoxicating in, in Trinidad. She was mesmerizing. But I think in Antigua, she was totally on fire. Some of you may have seen the, her hosting the Child Obesity Prevention webinar. And I think that DG Sonia is ready to secure a job as a CBS anchor. Excellent job, DG Sonia. And I trust that you're planning meeting tonight. You will do just as well in terms of determining all the things that's going to happen at our conference in Barbados. Imagine what will happen. I think that it will be an exciting conference in Barbados. DG Sonia, want to say a few words? <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Um, <laughs> that lunch was was the lunch with the the DG was actually when I was in St Kitts, oh, and Kitts. yes, it, it did um, it did turn out really well. The participants were truly engaging, and I think we learnt a lot um, at that luncheon. But yes, I am at the district conference meeting simultaneously as this. Uh, the plans are in place and we are ready to ensure that our guests in a few weeks, it's now one month exactly to the start, um, that our, we're ensuring that our guests are going to have just as good a time as we've had in the past. We're looking forward to welcoming everyone back to in-person con conferences and um, just really excited to have everybody in Barbados. So. Thanks so much for giving me a few minutes and I wish you all the very best for this evening's pets session. Thank you. Thank you, DG Sonia. Best wishes for your meeting. Uh, DGE, Leslie, you have a hard act to follow. Trust me on that one. So welcome to you, a special welcome to you. No, all the, the he is just the good PG. is. <laughs> All, to all the PGDs on the line and other distinguished leaders of our district, I say a special welcome and I thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know that we can always look to you for guidance and stewardship and please make sure that you're with us as much as we, you, your time will permit you. PDG Lara, who is our presenter this evening, is no stranger to all of us. Uh, PGD Lara, I must let you know that um, you know, I must let the participants know that you're one person that we can call on at any time. You make the time, even when you don't have the time, to share your expertise. So this evening, PGD Lara will be guiding us through minute writing. I'm sure most of you would figure out by now, wait a minute, it's really just to address minute writing. So all those secretary legs uh, on the line, we're looking forward to your participation in tonight's activity. I'm Liz Cox and I shall be your moderator for this evening. I'm being assisted by the members of the district training team, the district secretary elect Alana, and they're all working in the background to help to make tonight's activity a smooth running one. Sean keeps us grounded on Zoom, PP Lisa is our timekeeper, and I know just now she'll be sending me a minute to tell me I only have two minutes more. PP Leah shall moderate our Q&A segment, PP Abraham is our poll administrator, and the other members of the TL Julian, PP Viaz, and PP Joel are all playing a part in the background. We are also very fortunate to have Natalie, Mavis, and Fiki, who are our translators and interpreters, assist us to ensure our French counterparts are not left out. So many thanks to all of you for your assistance and your invaluable support throughout PETS 2022. The usual meeting protocols are in play this evening, but permit me to just remind you of a few. The session is going to be broadcast on two channels, French or English. So please select your language by clicking the icon at the bottom of your screen, it's a globe, and you would indicate whether it's French or, or, or English. You were muted as you entered the room, however, the raised hand Zoom will allow us to unmute you if, you so, if so desired by a presenter. Kindly mute yourself after as this session is being recorded. 
So quality audio is important. The recording shall be placed in our District 730 website and YouTube channel within 48 hours. So you have a chance to go back and listen to the presenter and perhaps the questions as well, the answers. We have allotted some time at the end of the presentation for a Q&A session. And please, I, I ask you to place your questions in the chat box in all caps. And please do so during the presentation. I know sometimes the first question takes a while to get going, but once you get going, I think more questions come, but let us try to make effective use of our time this evening. This is all for housekeeping, and now it is my distinct pleasure to hand the frame over to our incoming district governor, Leslie, to share some opening remarks. Leslie, the frame is yours. Thank you, Liz, and good evening, Paul. Welcome to PETS D3. Um, I want to welcome especially our district governor who has graced us with her presence this evening. It's fantastic to have a dynamic district governor, so aptly described by, by Liz earlier, uh, with us this evening. Uh, thank you for joining us, DG. Um, I also want to welcome our past district governors, our president elects and secretary elects. District Training Committee, of course, District Secretary Alana, and Sean for giving us a prompt prom start. <clears throat> also want to send out special greetings to our ladies as you celebrated your International Women's Day on March 8th. I do hope you had a great one, life. Great life. Wonderful, wonderful celebration. I enjoy every inch of it. I have to tell you, we too in Grenada did have, um, did recognize International Women's Day on Tuesday, the wonderful event. <clears throat> uh, this evening, we continue with our PETS training program. Um, we got off to a really inspiring start with the last, well, more than a week ago. We did have a break in between, and um, Michael Caruso started us on the right track and followed quickly by the following two days by PDG Elwin on especially on meeting matters as, as it pertains to presidents. Today, the focus will be on our secretaries. Secretaries, you know, you are the hub of the club. You are really very important in your club because you are the the, ch the channel through which everything happens in that club. You are the one to keep the president on his toes, keep here, keeps keep him updated on upcoming events, keep him updated on meeting times. Um, you also the one to relate to your club members, um, reminding them to play things like Jews. So you are certainly very important, and we 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 do hope that you will take your job seriously as you head into your, your, your Rotary as club secretary. <clears throat> um, this evening, our presenter, Pili Gilara, and of course, no better person to, to present on secretarial duties in clubs other than PG Gilara. She's, um, she's the expert in this matter and we look forward to her presentation later on. Before we go there, I just want to remind our President Elex and our Secretaries, remind you to take a look at that annual plan McGlide that was submitted to you earlier. It's a really important tool because it, it will help you to, <clears throat> it's a good toolkit to help you along as you, as you um, go into the Rotary Club Center to upload all of your information, your goals and your objectives. Not forgetting that we also ask you to please log on to the Learning Center, log into the relevant um, tra uh, le uh, learning program as it applies to yourself, as presidents and secretaries, but not only as that, uh, generally to, to make yourself acquainted with various um, administrative things and other activities in Rotaries. It's really important that you do that. So we appeal to you to please Make use of the planning guide, make use of the learning center and update your Rotary Club Center information as much as possible. So thank you very much for 
joined us this evening, all, and I now ask, um, I think, District Secretary Alana to introduce our presenter, PDG Lara. PDG Lara, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, District. Sorry. Thank you, District Governor Elect Leslie. District Training Ms. Past District Governors, Assistant Governors, President Elect, Secretary Elect, evening that I introduce our feature speaker, our very own Past District Governor, Lara Quentrell Thomas. She has over 30 years experience in recruitment and human resource management, both in the United Kingdom and in Trinidad and Tobago, and over 25 years as an entrepreneur and a company owner. As founder and chairman of Regency Recruitment and Resources Limited, PDG Lara has over responsibility for more than 100 contact, contract personnel employed with clients. Her role includes negotiating mass, master service agreements, business development and strategic planning, and also designs and facilitates training programs for Regency corporate clients in a range of topics, including DEI, business etiquette, interviewing skills and professional networking. Her education includes an MBA and certificate in industrial relation, labor law, mediation, Behavioral episodes as the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Organization of Recruitment Services Providers and is immediate past president of the Trinidad and Tobago Coalition of Services Industries. She's the director of the International Women's Forum of Trinidad and Tobago and the National Training Agency and Youth Business, also in Trinidad and Tobago. She's a founding member and was the first president of the Association of Female Executives of Trin in Trinidad and it's a former director of the Office of Procurement Regulation Board, Economic Advisory Board, and AMCHA in Trinidad. PG Lara is a member of the Employment and Labor Relations Committee of the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce, Human Resource Management Association, and the Trinidad and Tobago Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. She has been a member of RI or Rotary International, the world's, as we know, the world's leading organization since 1999, and is currently a director of the Rotary Club of Central Port of Spain, part of, which is part of our district. The, she has held positions as Assistant Regional Rotary Foundation Coordinator for the Caribbean, as mentioned, a past district governor, group study exchange team leader, Chair of district committees, including the Grants Committee, Rotaract, Website, Literacy, Public Image, and Training. And she has also been a coordinator of five regional model U United Nations assemblies. District Governor Elect Leslie Rotarians, I now present to you past District Governor Lara. Thank you very much. She pray presents on wait a minute okay can you hear me now good Thank hello you, good thank you so much alana lovely to see you good evening fellow rotarians special welcome to our presidents and secretaries elect thank you dg lezzy for inviting me to be part of your pets program and to liz and the district training team and paddy and the translators thank you all for the remarkable technical support and of course, DG Sonia having a whale of a time going around our districts. Lovely that you have a few minutes to spend with us. So I am here this evening to talk to you about probably the most boring thing in Rotary, which is taking minutes. But as Leslie said, DG Leslie said, the heart of the club is the secretary and the heart of the secretary is minutes. The heart of a secretary is record keeping, archiving organizing. So if you have agreed to be the secretary of your club, and I hope you did so with joy and excitement, it is absolutely imperative that you make a commitment to do a good job because the club relies on the secretary in so many ways to really be that, that individual that holds things together, 
but particularly information, knowing where information is, where it's stored, how to access it, how to share it. So keeping minutes, taking them, keeping them, sharing them is such an important job for a club secretary, indeed secretary of any board or any committee. Uh, and you heard that I serve on a number of different boards and I have served as secretary on a number of boards. I am currently the secretary on a, a board in Trinidad for what's known as International Women's Foundation. And writing minutes, taking minutes is such an important responsibility. So what we're gonna go through this evening are some basic thoughts on why we have minutes, what they're for, how to structure them. But before I start the slides, I really want to impress upon you the importance of making a commitment to minutes because it does take a lot of time. It can feel overwhelming, especially if you're dealing with all of the other emails that are coming in, all of the different other requirements from your club. But proper record keeping is absolutely critical, particularly at the end of your year when you hand over to the next leadership team. There needs to be a smooth transition and that can only really be done if there are proper records. So one of the things I think it's important for secretaries elect to do as you start to plan and prepare for July 1 is to really schedule time every single week. I, when I was club secretary 100 years ago, I put in my diary an hour a week to do rotary minutes. Now that was before I realized how, how much work rotary really was. I was naive at the time and, and Sonia and David and, and Leslie and other people on the district team will know that it's a lot more than an hour a week now, but this was before email. And I would schedule time to do my rotary secretary work. And I say that because if you don't put it in your calendar and you don't plan for it, it often doesn't happen or it doesn't happen efficiently, and then it, be, it piles up and it becomes overwhelming. So it's important to make that commitment in terms of time. Give yourself an hour, a couple of hours every week to really do the secretarial work of your club. And you will know when the best time is for you. For me, it was Saturday mornings and I would go on the computer on the Saturday morning and do what I had to do so that I was ready for the week ahead. It's difficult. It was difficult then to take time from my job, but find a way to stay on top of the work. It's absolutely critical because it can very quickly pile up. So with that, let me now go to my slides. So we are talking about minutes. Wait a minute. And I love the title. Thank you, Liz. What I am going to go through, three things really. The first is what are minutes, why? And I know I'm talking to professionals, I know I'm talking to grown-ups, but it's astonishing how often we don't do good minutes. We forget to do the minutes or we're scrambling with the minutes. So it's important to understand the purpose. Then we're going to look at a couple of different types of minutes that you can use in your club and seven things that you really must always include. So what are minutes? Well, in their most base form, minutes are a, re a record, a written record of both the conversation that was held and most importantly, decisions that were made during a meeting. I have found for me as a secretary on the board that I mentioned and having served as secretary many times, the focus should be on the decisions that were made rather than what everybody said. Of course, people's contributions are important, but you need to always understand that the purpose of the minutes should guide how you actually prepare your minutes. So always reflect on the purpose. Why am I doing minutes? Okay, it's not necessary. Now this is different from if you're a corporate secretary on a state board or the board of a financial institution or something like that, where very often verbatim minutes are required. That is not normally the case in a rotary meeting, but decisions made are absolutely essential because those will inform, for example, your club bylaws or the dues that your members are going to pay. And somebody may say, well, I need to, I need to understand how that decision was made by the board. And you can refer back because you've, you've, 
you manage and you are recording the decisions made in that way. So minutes are used for, of course, sharing information with people who could not make the meeting. As I said, keeping track of decisions, but also action items. The very best minutes are clearly defining who has to do what and by when. Minutes should not just say, Lara agreed to do a budget for the project. They should include by when, maybe then who she's sharing it with. So the detail required in proper minutes is important because that is the checklist for members of the committee, the board, the project team, the uh, subcommittee, whatever it might be, to go back and reflect on what they had agreed they would do. And then this guides your strategy as an organization, as a club. This guides how you plan events. This guides how, you, as I said, maybe you have to amend your bylaws. Of course, we are required to review our bylaws every couple of years. So you may have board decisions that will influence changes to your bylaws. So it's important to use, understand the purpose of minutes. It's not just, you know, Betty was there and Billy was there and Bobby had on a green shirt and Betty's hair looked nice tonight. It's really profoundly important to understand that minutes have a purpose and they guide the strategy of your club. So the way that you take the minutes, the recording that you share with your board, with your members, should reflect and honor, I think, the importance of minutes and not be scrappy and, and not be, um, you know, sort of lackadaisical. They're an important document for Rotary Clubs. Yes, we're fellowship and we're fun and we're liming and we're drinking rum and we're all of those lovely things in Rotary, but we have a serious purpose. And minutes are a serious part of our purpose as clubs. As I said, minutes should include deadlines. So the president or the project leader or the committee chairman can go back to the minutes and reflect. We had agreed by the 1st of March we would do this or by the 1st of April. And so you can measure success and celebrate it as the club hits certain milestones that the board has set, but also hold Rotarians accountable that they had agreed to do a particular thing by a particular date and it was minuted. This also does, minutes do also give your club a certain level of protection. Now we're lucky in the Caribbean, we don't get sued very often, we're not a particularly libelous culture. But, you know, it is important for the board to be able to defend decisions against other club members, for example, in a forum, to go back and be able to show we took a vote. You've elected us to lead this club. The board has a very important responsibility to guide strategy for a club. And the minutes will record how decisions are made to move the club forward. And you can defend the decisions because the way your minutes are written and stored and shared and they are properly recorded. Of course now, because we're doing so much on Zoom, you may even have a, an actual audio recording of the decision-making process. Now there are two different types of minutes that are available. I mean, there's lots of templates that you can use, of course. I generally do use a template. I use the same template for every single meeting and I would just change the date and, and update it. But for formal meetings, such as board and committee meetings, it's important to use a formal layout as opposed to an informal meeting, which I will come to and discuss. So this, for example, will include the roll call. That is a list of not just who was there, but who also was not there. Your board may be 11, 12 members. It's important to note who apologized, the absence, who was unable to attend as well as who was there. Because people who don't attend multiple board meetings, obviously that's a challenge for the club. That may be something that needs to be addressed. You may even have in your bylaws that to become a director, you are required to attend a certain number of board meetings in a year. And so your roll call will be evidence of attendance or lack thereof. You must always, at the beginning of your board meeting, approve the, meet, the minutes of the former board meeting. And it should record any amendments, errors, omissions, 
who the adoption of the minutes was moved by and who seconded the adoption. And if you're really good, you should get the minutes of the previous board meeting amended and signed by your president and then archived as the official record of that particular board meeting. Secretary could sign as well. It depends what, again, what your bylaws say or your standard operating procedure. But once the amendments have been made, the actual final version of your board minutes, particularly the board minutes, should be signed and saved, archived in a place that can be accessed by future boards, by your current board, but those are the definitive minutes. Once you have gone through your minutes and you have dealt with matters arising from the previous minutes, then you may go into new business. And then of course you may adjourn the meeting. Now I'm not talking about meeting management tonight because that's another presentation for another day, but it's important to understand that the agenda for your meeting will really be the format of your minutes. So whatever the agenda that's sent out by the secretary or agreed with the president is, that will be the flow of your minutes. So the two things should really marry together. And in fact, you may even include the agenda as an appendix. I have seen that done. So we had certain issues that we really needed to raise. They were on the agenda and the agenda is included in the minutes as an appendix. Nothing wrong with that. You can have as many appendices as you wish in minutes. So the call to order is of course the chair, which would typically be your president. If he or she's absent, maybe your president elect, calls the meeting to order. The secretary then should do the roll call and you then list everybody that's present. With Zoom, it's easy to see everybody. We make a note of it. We in my club, we still um, measure, we don't call it attendance anymore. Of course, we measure engagement. So we do actually typically, do, we might even do a screenshot of who is at the meeting just for the record so we know exactly who was there, but we definitely keep a note of everybody who was at the meeting. So the call to order may be the president. You may or may not have a prayer. You may or may not say the four-way test. You, there are different clubs have different protocols as regards to board and committee meetings, but at the very minimum, you must begin with the call to order and the roll call, and these are minuted. Then in your minutes, the secretary should read the minutes from the previous meeting. What typically happens now though, is that they are emailed and members are asked to comment by email. If that's the case, then your minutes should reflect the date on which they were shared with the rest of the board, comments, errors, omissions, amendments that were received, and then the approval. So in the minutes, let's say of the 1st of March, you should record as a secretary that the minutes of the 1st of February meeting were emailed to the club on the 10th of February. No comments were received. The following member has moved that the minutes be approved and the next member has seconded. So it's important that you're showing that sequence of activities as a secretary that you have shared the minutes within the agreed time frame. There were no errors or there were changes. And now what we're looking at are the amended versions. So documenting that sequence of activities, I think is essential to show the work of the secretary, but to show the club, if anybody ever asks, the process that you used. And then you go into your issues. The, the minutes do not need to reflect what everybody said. Lara said this, Leslie commented, Liz disagreed, you know, Paddy said, no, that's, that's not, I don't agree with that. You can just say a discussion ensued, the following points were raised, it's not ideal, in my opinion, to name names in minutes, although there may be certain people who require or request that their, their comments be attributed to them. So you need to agree with your board, what's the best protocol for us? In some committees I've been on, it just will, there will just be a list of some of the comments that were shared. So the issue was discussed and the following, the following items were raised. Do we have enough money? Have we got a corporate sponsor? Not necessarily Lara asked or David said, but that is a protocol that you can agree with your club. But at the end of that, then you summarize, was a decision made? And then what are the action items coming out of that? At the 
end of the open business, which is the matters arising from your previous board meeting, you then do the same thing for new business. So this is a new item that somebody wished to bring up. So we've had the crisis in Ukraine. We wish to bring to the board a discussion about whether the club wishes to make a donation to the disaster fund uh, for Ukraine. So we have a discussion about that and then we summarize. And then you note on the minutes, the adjournment, the meeting closed at 6 p.m. Ideally, you could put the date and time of the next meeting. I'm sure like my club, most of you have your board meetings on the same day and time each month. And then you note the minutes were submitted by, and then of course in the next iteration, they'll be approved by. So the board minutes particularly have to be very formal. They don't have to be very long, but they should record properly the decisions that were made, key issues that were raised, and the action items that the board has agreed. So I have seen board minutes that are one page, get straight to the heart of the matter. There are other board minutes that are 15 pages long, and every single time anybody spoke, it's recorded. I don't think we need that in Rotary. That's my personal view. What's important is the decisions that are made by the board to guide the club and move it forward. Then you have informal minutes. And this you may wish to use, for example, maybe for a project meeting or even a club meeting. Some club secretaries do take minutes of the weekly meetings of clubs. And that may typically, maybe you do a newsletter or something like that to share with members who were not there, what were some of the things that were discussed at our club meeting. And you can use a less formal structure for these. Again, you will have a list of the attendees, the date and time, but in the difference, <coughs> excuse me, with this is that there's typically just one objective, one purpose. This committee met for the purpose of planning the district conference, planning the Model UN. Or maybe if it's a club meeting today, we're just going through a couple of things on the Rotary Foundation. So these can be a lot simpler because they're not necessarily reflecting strategic decisions that are made by the board. You may have three or four talking points and coming out of those some action items. I like to do minutes in table form. I love a table because I find them much easier to read than just you know, pages and pages of text. The use of bullet points and numbering is always very important. My recommendation to you is that you use numbers, not bullets, because then if I wish to refer to the minutes, I can say under vocational service item number three, rather than having to say, well, it's the fifth bullet point. And of course you have numbers, Roman numerals, letters, you have all sorts of options. So the way that I do minutes is each different topic. So let's say we're dealing with the different uh, avenues of service of the club. So I will have a club administration, and then there'll be a one upcoming club forum, a two payment of dues, a three financial reports. So whatever it might be, item number B, international service, and then B1, B2, so that anybody reading the minutes referring to them can quickly point to a line or a topic that they wish to discuss. The other thing you must always do is number your pages. Again, you want to make it e as easy as possible for your users, your readers to go back and reflect and, and pick up information, pick up decisions. A great thing to do as well on formal minutes at the end and on informal is this action item summary. It's not traditionally done in formal minutes, but I think for Rotary, it's super helpful, even if it's done as an appendix, to just list in a snapshot. These are the five decisions that were made. This is for Lara, for Liz, for Leslie, to be done by this date. So that I, as a director or a member of that committee, can just quickly go and look and remind, remind myself of what I had agreed to do. That's a, a choice you can make. You can embed them, of course, in the body of the minutes but I do think a synopsis at the end is very helpful. Now in your minutes, as I said, you should always include seven things. The date and the time. The location is not necessarily essential, um, but it can be there. The names of the participants, and a lot of people also include the positions. 
So you may see Leslie, district governor elect, Lara, past district governor, or whoever's there. So you may actually see the position that that person holds in the club. Again, it's a, a personal choice. The purpose of the meeting, it's a board meeting, it's a review of our bylaws, it's a club forum, whatever it may be. And by the way, if you're having club forums, which you should be doing, those also have to be minuted because important decisions are made at club forums by the people in your club, the members of your club. It can just be an informal minute. It doesn't have to be formal, but those decisions must be recorded. You must have your agenda and your topics. You should always have action items and then next meeting date, time and place, and finally, any supplementary documents, which is your appendix. So maybe, for example, in my club, what happens is if a member of the board cannot attend the board meeting, like today is my club board meeting, I wasn't able to attend because I'm here with you. So I will submit in advance my report for the areas of the club that I am responsible for. And then that will be recorded as an appendix. So I wasn't at the meeting, but I submitted my update on membership or the model UN or whatever projects I'm working on. And those are then added as an appendix. So then at the beginning of the minutes, you list the appendix, appendices, sorry, that you have included. So it's important to have this structure with your minutes and make sure that at the very least you have these seven elements. And then of course, once you've completed the minutes, make sure that you share them with your team and you archive them properly. Some final thoughts. I believe it is essential to send your minutes out two weeks before the meeting. So if you meet monthly, your meeting is on the first of the month, your minutes should go out by the 14th for the following or the 15th for the following meeting. I don't think it's good practice the night before a board meeting or an hour before the board meeting that you're getting the minutes. That does happen a lot. It, it's not best practice. It's very difficult for board members to then have a chance to review and to comment and spot errors. I'm, a, as many of you may know from Facebook, I'm somebody that is obsessed with spelling and I like to go through the minutes and, and look for not just spelling errors, but things that were not necessarily agreed or written or recorded in the right way, because I want to make sure that the integrity of our board is maintained. And it may just be that you didn't quite hear something or you, you, know, you had a question that wasn't answered. So it's important that the board collaborates to support the secretary to get the minutes right. And you should be able to archive. You should have, of course, with the the cloud you don't need to pay you can store minutes for every single avenue of service in your club every committee every project there should be a folder in your club virtual archives with minutes of meetings and other things like budgets and press releases and all of those things the reason being that most clubs repeat projects so i should be able if i'm the incoming president to, or the incoming uh, fundraising chairman to go into our club archives and look at the, all of the minutes from the previous year's fundraising committee and budgets and project templates. You know, it's astonishing to me how often, even in my club, we do a project every single year and yet every single year it's like we've never done it before. Where, where's the budget? How much, do, where, who do we speak to about, who's our supplier for this? And that's why we archive. And that's not the secretary's job alone, of course, but the secretary should be somebody who is guiding, encouraging other club leaders to archive, to send minutes to him, to put in the archive, to follow up with club chairman. Can I have the minutes of your last meeting? I want to make sure we archive them properly. They can be very simple, but it's really important that those records are kept, particularly for handing over to your next leadership team. The way that I do minutes is I am very blessed to have a laptop and I actually type minutes during the meeting. I'm a pretty fast typer, so I find it really helps me to, even if it's there's spelling errors and things, to have a, 
a sort of a bare bones minutes typed up rather than doing handwritten minutes, which I then have to transcribe or watching or listening to a recording that I then have to transcribe. But that's my choice. You must find a way that works for you. But what I recommend is that as soon as you can, while the decisions are fresh and the conversations are fresh, that you, you do type up the minutes. Make sure that the, there's clarity around decisions, actions, etc. You can bold them, you can highlight them, put them in a different color, whatever works for your club to really accentuate the key decisions that were made by the board in that meeting. And it's also important to use the same tense to make sure that the minutes are grammatically correct. Of course, do your spell checking so that you really do present to your board a professional set of minutes with maybe minimal changes that need to be made. So take pride in your minutes. Do them well. This is a representation of your club, your board, the strategy, the decisions that are made. So it's an important document. And so when you're doing minutes, you really do need to give yourself time to do them properly. Make sure that they are professionally written. Uh, written. Make sure that they are thorough and as detailed as you need them to be to move your club forward. I don't believe in including personal observations in minutes. You want to focus on the facts, not the people. So you will not, you should not find in board minutes something like Lara was furious and exclaimed angrily that she didn't agree with the budget, no way, no how. That, that is not appropriate for minutes. Minutes must focus on decisions made, action items, questions and queries, of course, can be minuted, but it shouldn't be a reflection of anything personal. And in fact, even as club leaders, your presidents, I know you've been taught about using the parking lot when you're managing meetings and keeping the personal out of these conversations and focusing on the work, the good work of your club. Try and keep them as short as possible. And as I said, if you do need to refer, maybe there's a planning document or uh, GG Leslie talked about your planning guide, or maybe you've got your strategic plan. So you wish to refer to that in the minutes, you can include it as an appendix, or if it's in the cloud, you can include a link. So the president referred to our strategic plan for 2022 to 2025, and there's the link in the minutes to go and have a look at it in the cloud if you need to. You know, we have the tools now we don't have to print 40 page documents anymore. We have the tools to really make our minutes wonderful and engaging and interesting, but proper and professional. That's it. I hope that I've answered some of your questions. I hope that I've inspired you to do really amazing minutes. They are an important tool for clubs and I'm very happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, PDG Lara. I, I think that you, really concisely put together what is extremely important in minutes in terms of being committed, first of all, as secretary, because you know I serve as secretary and yes, it is the belly of the club. It really is the belly of the club. You have to have the back of the president being the secretary and being committed and taking minutes and also writing those minutes early so that you, you know, it's fresh on your mind. But most importantly, and I'm glad you underscored that the decisions and the action items, I think that is key to any minute taken and, and having a summary, because I love to have that, that box with the summary uh, at, the, at the bottom of the minutes, because I think it's easy to flip through. Persons can quickly decide, okay, this is something I have to do. Getting that minute out as well early and not the day before the meeting, so that persons who have to do stuff can get those things done on time. I got to, before I hand over to PP Leah, I have a question that came in on the private, message from PGG um, Lyle and he's saying uh, whether the minutes of the board of directors should be shared with the membership uh, well, and he just wants to know whether it's something uh, that some clubs I know do it but what's your what's your view on that I I actually believe that the club should, the board should be as transparent as possible I believe that they once they are approved and <clears throat> excuse me archived in such a way that they can't be edited 
then access can be given to all members of the club. I don't think any board should be hiding things. Now, if there's a confidential matter, let's say, for example, the termination of a member for bringing Rotary into disrepute, it may be that the board constitutes a special meeting to discuss that issue alone. And those minutes are not necessarily shared with the members of the club. So there are instances when a club board may wish to just sort of share the final decision rather than the, the verbatim discussion. But general board, I mean, in fact, members of the club should be allowed and invited to observe board meetings. You know, they, I remember when I joined Rotary, we were encouraged as new members to go and sit in on board meetings. You couldn't speak, you didn't vote or anything, but you saw how the club was organized and, and was run. So I don't, I think the more you hide things, the more people suspect you're hiding things. And then that is not good. Clubs should be transparent. Except, right. as I say, when there's something that may not, maybe a bit sensitive. Sensitive item. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. And the thing is, with uh, persons attending board meetings as well, board meetings should not be shrouded in secrecy. And I think you really develop your next pool of leaders if you encourage people to come to the board meetings to see this is what happens at the board. But yes, this is a role that I think I like to, to yeah. you know, it's suited to me and my personality. And I, I like to take up that challenge because this hesitancy to sit on the board, I think, That's is, is right. pervasive in our district. So it's yeah. something that we have to work on. Anyhow, let me hand over to our Q&A master, Pippi Leah. It's over to you. Thanks, Liz. Hi, everyone. Great presentation, Pidiji Lara. We already have lots of questions for you. <laughs> okay. So let's get right into it. Our first question comes from from Abraham, should the secretary interrupt the meeting to get clarifications on items to minute? Yes, I agree with that 100%, Abraham. I think because you are the designated recorder of decisions, if there is something, especially sometimes on Zoom, you can't quite hear somebody or, uh, you know, you didn't quite record it, get a, a decision, absolutely, you can stop and say, my apologies, fellow directors, could you just repeat that so that I get it accurately for the minutes? One of the things that <clears throat> we did recently in an, another board that I sit on, there were a number of issues that we had to vote on. And so we had the screen, you know, that it was nine of us, I think. And we did the hands up emo emo emoticon, emoji. And, um, and we took a screenshot. So the secretary was able to see of the nine members, there were six hands raised to vote in favor of whatever the motion was. So you can use that as a, as a backup if you need to as secretary, but absolutely your job is to get it right. So don't feel that you, and you can let board members know in advance, folks, I'm gonna, if I need to, I will interrupt you to get the, the minutes right. Good, thank you, Laura. Pleasure. Great, thanks, PDG, Lara. Next question is from Risa. Risa asks, the secretary will receive correspondence prior to the meeting. And these are shared at the meeting. How should this be done? I guess. Um, uh, I'm a, okay, so I'm assuming that's a range of things from emails from RI to letters asking for money and, and, and all sorts of different things. So it, again, it depends on what your club's standard operating procedure is. In my club, when the secretary receives correspondence, she or he logs it. So there should be a, well, I, okay. Let me say when I was secretary, this is what I did. I. I can't speak for the current secretary, but there should be a log of correspondence. And then one of two things, the secretary then, di oh, my background's going funny, directs the correspondence to the right chairman. So if it's somebody asking for a donation, uh, for money, for an operation, then maybe you have that goes to your, um, you have a fundraising chairman or uh, service chair or something like that. But also the protocol should be that the secretary confirms receipt, acknowledges receipt to the recipient. What you don't ever want to happen is have somebody write to your club and then they never hear anything. So you have a template that says, thank you, we've received your email. I forward it to the relevant committee chair that will get back to you within 10 days or a month or whatever it might be. And then you need to follow up with that person to make sure that their committee has met to discuss the matter, made a decision. That's if it's a, if it's a request. If it's just information, or I sent a flyer about the RI convention in Houston, then you just circulate that as a FYI. You can put it as an appendix. It may not necessarily need to be. I think you, 
you need to be able to discern what should and shouldn't be in board minutes because it's really about strategic decisions. You could just put a line item under any other business secretary circulated notice of Houston convention on June 23rd or whatever it is. That's fine. So again, you know, you need to evaluate. You don't want the minutes to be so long. Um, and we do get a ton of emails from Rotary, a ton of stuff. So you don't want all of it necessary to be in, in your minutes. But I, I think it's important if it's a letter that's requesting something, it's logged and responded to and followed up and action is taken. Yes, no, whatever. If it's just an information, then you just note that you sent it. Great. Thanks, PDG Lara. We have two similar questions, so I'll just group them as one. Essentially, it's what are your what are your guidelines or recommendations, basic requirements as it relates to committee meeting minutes and whether or not they should be shared as an annex to regular club meetings occurring during the same period? Um, well, the second part of that question, I would say no. If you're doing it properly, all, or as I said, all committee meetings meeting minutes should be archived so I should be able to say as the chairman of the membership committee let's say folks <clears throat> if you want to go and see the minutes you know here's the link to our membership folder with all of the minutes key decisions however that are made at a committee can be sh should be shared with the club at your weekly meeting the way that my club has done it in the past is once a month we have a week a, a members meeting that focuses on the work of the club we don't have any guest speakers, we have no external visitors, and we just sort of go through all of the different committee updates, if you wish. So that's also a way for members to know what's happening in the various committees. We have a WhatsApp chat. So if there's a key thing happening, an event, we want people to come out this weekend, we're doing a walk for obesity or whatever, we use the WhatsApp chat. But in terms of minutes, I do not think every member of the club needs to get every set of minutes, no. Okay, but then just to clarify, you are saying that for committee meetings, minutes should be taken, recorded, yes, yes. and archived. Okay. Absolutely. That, that, that was, they wanted to know the minimum requirement there, and then that was the second part, whether or not they should be shared. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Leah. Yes. Okay. Where we have Rotarian or non-board members attend board meetings, should these Rotarians be minuted? Should their attendance be minuted, or is there a need? I think it's a good idea just to maybe note them as a line as observers or guests or something like that. Um, you could even just put it, uh, yeah, I think it's important to know who is in the room and to record who is in the room, but you would have attending directors, non-attending directors, and then maybe guests. Great, that was from Roseanne. I hope that answered your question. We move on to Lydia. Should recordings of meetings be deleted after the minutes have been approved and archived? I guess that's for Zoom meetings she's yeah. referring. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I would say yes. My instinct tells me yes, because once the minutes have been approved, that should be it. Um, I mean, it depends on your club's bandwidth and what you can store. If you have the capacity to store everything, well store it but i don't think that's necessary once the minutes have been approved though, in my opinion great our next question i think you answered but just to be certain i'll repeat it should the board minutes be circulated to the general membership okay so yes or no i don't think they have to be circulated necessarily what i do think though is again if you're archiving them properly the club should know when the board meeting is they should know that the board has met on the 1st of March and the minutes are now available in the archive on the 15th of March. So they can go and look at them. I don't think it's necessary that you circulate the minutes to the members. What you should do, though, is at least once a month, the board should update the members on key decisions made. So they don't need to have the whole you know, background necessarily unless they choose to go and look at them and they should be available and accessible. But what you should circulate is just a sort of high level. These were the five key decisions made at the last board meeting as a sort of FYI. Okay, great. I hope that clarifies it for you, A.G. Banji. Uh, next question. If a whole other matter comes up when a different agenda item is being discussed, one, how should such be noted in minutes? And do you have any advice on how to handle or prevent <laughs> such from occurring in meetings 
Okay, so I'm going to answer the second part first. This is where the use of, I, and I referred to this, the parking lot, and I, I am sure as part of your pets training, you're doing meeting management. But what the president or the chair of the meeting should do is stop the person to say, okay, Abraham, that's a good point. However, it's not related to what we're discussing right now. So I'm going to put it in the parking lot. And if we have time, because an agenda has been set and we have a very clear, we don't want to keep members for five hours in a board meeting, we will come back to it. So then the secretary may just make a note, Abraham raised the issue of the budget. The president, um, you know, reserved the, the right to discuss that at the end of the meet meeting, time permitting. So the president has to control the meeting so that members don't divert the conversation all over the place and stay to the time and the agenda. But then you have the opportunity under any other business, and members should know that, to raise a, an issue so that, okay, it wasn't exactly that, but I, I'm gonna come back to it under any other business. If we have time, so the, the, the meeting chairman is responsible and the secretary can just note that, you know, DGE Leslie asked if we could discuss X, the chairman agreed if time allowed we would discuss it at the end of the meeting and then you can discuss it at the end of the meeting or if you run out of time the president then should pledge to schedule a meeting to discuss that item that that then leads into a question that the next question which do you think the meeting chair slash president should always be the one leading the discussion or should they just set the tone for the discussion I don't think the chairman has to always lead the discussion because of course we know that there's going to be various committee chairs and who will present on their various avenues of service or projects. The, ch the chairman of the meeting, president or whomever it may be, sets the tone, you're quite right Leah, but also needs to control the flow of the conversation. By that I mean keeping people on track, reminding people that there is an agenda. It's not an easy thing to do with Rotarians. You know, Rotarians like to talk and we like to go all over the place. And so the, the chairman does need to sort of, you know, herd the cats a little bit to, to get them back on the agenda. But we're all big people. We're all grown ups. We should respect each other enough to be able to say, you know, do you mind? OK, I'm going to be one more minute on this topic. Then let's get back to the agenda because Liz still hasn't presented on the budget and we've only got 10 minutes left. So we need to respect each other's time and so on. But the chair is really there to guide the conversation, open it guide it and then close it. Great, thanks so much. Uh, while we are not speaking of agendas, while they're standard agenda items, can you one, give us a guide on which committee should report first or if there is a need for a certain committee to report first? And secondly, how would you suggest that we prioritize reports from each committee? So I don't think there's any special order you could do it alphabetically. I mean, I don't think it doesn't matter as long as every committee is heard at some point in the meeting. In terms of, and again, it's club preference, right? No, so the way we do it, we have the same order every time. But for example, tonight I had to come on to this session. So I shared my report, but I went on for a little bit, had a couple of conversations and then came off. So the person may ask because they can't stay for the whole meeting if their report could be first or be prioritized. What I do think is important though, if you've got everybody there in terms of the prioritizing is to prioritize the, the issues that are current in the sense of like the next project. Let's focus our energy on the fundraiser that's coming up in two weeks time or the district conference because that's a month. Some of the other things are not as time sensitive. We could come back to those or we could have a round robin conversation. So the, the chairman, the president, needs to look at the agenda and, and figure out, we've only got an hour, we've got two hours. I'd like to prioritize our conversation around these three things. And if we have time, I'll come back to some of the others. Based, I would think mostly on time sensitivity. Um, so for example, payment of dues to RI, there's time frame for that. You know, you've got to know the calendar, you've got to know your club's activities and, and you move it around like that. If there's no priorities, then you just go in the same order every month, whichever is comfortable for you. Great. We have a question from Julian. Must the actions listed in the minutes uh, be the short-term actions or just long-term actions? 
they can be both they can be everything so every meeting at the end of each meeting you should have a list of all the decisions that were made and the actions that have to be taken to support those decisions so let's say for example we've agreed that we are going to raise a million dollars coming out of that we're going to have three activities and Liz is going to chair one and Paddy's going to chair another and Lara's going to chair one. And so each of them has agreed within one month to submit a concept paper or a project plan. Um, if it's a project that's happening next year, then I may have six months to present my plan where Leslie may only have a month. So, but the minutes can reflect all of those dates. So it, it doesn't have to be only things that we've agreed to do by the next board meeting although those of course would be highlighted because those are more urgent. It can be the board agreed in six months to revisit the issue of X, right? So you can record all the different decisions, but remember your decisions should be guided by your strategic plan, by the RI strategic plan. So, you know, these things shouldn't just sort of be made in a vacuum. There are other guiding documents that you should be referring to. Great. We have, uh, an extremely technical question, and this person is obviously suffering from OCD just as I do. So it's a two-parter. Whether minutes are produced in hard or soft copy, what archiving standards should be adopted as far as a proper naming and filing system? That's part one. And part two is how should such standards be passed from one administrative year to the next, such that any changes to these standards are properly vetted, approved, and retroactively applied to existing files? Right, that's, I'm certain that's Sean Paddy. So, <laughs> so Paddy, thank you for your question. <laughs> I'm sure that's Paddy. Um, <clears throat> right, so of course the club can decide what labeling standard it, <clears throat> excuse me, it wishes to use. Um, but what I do suggest, whatever you decide, and there are many different ways of labeling documents and files, we all know that, that you should record in either in your standing, op I think standing operating procedure, you need to create a document that defines, <clears throat> excuse me, how files are to be labeled and stored. And then that should be the standard for the club maybe consult an expert in labeling or archiving, I don't know. So you may have, for example, I would suggest you've got your Rotary Club and then under that you would have your different avenues of service. And under each of those, there may be the year for, for committee minutes, there may be the project. So I, as you know, I'm very involved in the Model UN. I have a massive folder called Model UN. And under that, I've got 2017, 2018, 2019. And under each of those, I've got budget, sponsors, diplomats, etc. But then the actual documents themselves have to be dated and labeled in such a way. I'm not an expert on labeling. I know where my things are. I know how to find them and I can share them easily with people. But I think it's an important conversation to have as a secretary. You know, talk to somebody who knows or maybe somebody in your organization will know about labeling and, and what's the best thing and draft a document that says to your club, this is how we will be labeling and archiving our minutes and other documents and then let that be the standard i don't think you should be changing it all the time maybe every couple of years if you look at your bylaws maybe you want to change it and i also don't think you go retroactively and relabel everything the standard that it is today is the standard that it is today if that changes in five years so be it but it's important to document how you intend to label and archive your documents Thank you, Paddy, for that one. That's nice. <laughs> Eight o'clock at night. <laughs> it's so wonderful when you, you know your I know, I know it's him. I can, <laughs> just, see him. I can just see him there laughing at me. And there's a part C to it. Oh, is yes, there? Yes, okay. there's another part. I was just about to get to that. <laughs> How should outstanding items from one year be treated oh. in the minutes of a following year? Right. So, again, a suggestion is that at the end of a rotary year, the board should meet and reflect on what was achieved, what is still outstanding. Because remember that the president should be perhaps giving some awards or recognition for achievement and success and so on. And so coming out of that, there may be three or four things, hopefully not many, that are still outstanding and do have to be passed to the next board. That can be documented either in a separate document, a handover document or 
or it would just be reflected in the very last minutes of the outgoing board. So what we do in my club is we have a meeting where the two boards sit together, the outgoing and the incoming, before the incoming takes, takes office. So that's a great time as well to discuss some of the issues that weren't dealt with, some projects that are going into the next year and document that, that these are things that will go through to the next rotary year. But at the very minimum, the last minutes of a board year should reflect unresolved issues, unanswered questions, projects not completed. So the incoming board can see what they now have to carry on with. That, that's a great start to the new year. Helps you set your tone. Yeah, taking on somebody else's, all of the stuff they didn't do. <laughs> well, I mean, if we are realistic, those of us who, who've served as presidents know that you can't complete it all in a year. That's right. And yeah. that, that's why Rotary operates the way it does in, in, in three-year tranches, because realistically, doing something that is, um, uh, but what would you say? tactile it's it's you can it makes a difference it makes an impact sometimes it will take more than just the one year yeah absolutely okay if there i have one more no two more questions and then unless we have others in the chat between now and then we have two more questions to answer the <laughs> this one should the minutes of the previous meeting really be read out as this, this can extend the meeting time. Is it possible, as I know in some clubs, once they're circulated early, if you go through, you set a time at the beginning for approval and you go through page by page where persons read on their own time or if they come with any uh, amendments, et cetera. But is it really re a requirement to read out the entire minutes? Yeah, so it's not mandatory, as I said, all of these decisions and how you do your minutes, record them, store them and share them are up to individual clubs. I know with email now, most of us will receive minutes by email to review, ideally two weeks before the board meeting or the, or the next meeting. And so we have time. So they don't need to be read at the beginning of the meeting. You're correct. You may just go through page by page or you may have received all the errors and corrections beforehand. And so you're presenting amended minutes. I have been at board meetings where some members absolutely make no comment of any sort on the minutes. That is not me ever. Um, I am always the person who, you know, makes the changes and makes the amendments. And then the rest of the board just says, okay, well, Lara's looked at them, so they're probably all right. So let's move on. And I mean, that, that's fine. You know, the club knows me. I've been in the board and the club for a long time. It's what's right for your club. If a member says, I'd like to discuss that again or I'd like to read that again you should have them available to do that but now that we email them I don't think you necessarily have to read them out it's really your decision as I say I do sit on a board a state agency and every meeting we start with reading out the previous meeting minutes because if anybody wasn't there and or didn't read them this is their third you know second chance to say they can't say they didn't know if you see what I'm saying but that's a requirement, that's a formal board, that's the corporate secretary. We read the minutes out every time with amendments. So it depends on, on the culture of the organization and what's considered appropriate. Okay, that's understandable. I know I said I had two questions, but everyone who knows me knows that I have issues with math. And so my <laughs> adding just didn't quite math just now. So now I have two more questions. Right, okay. <laughs> the penultimate question. How do you determine, determine whether an item is a matter arising from the minutes or it's a new item on the agenda? Is there a rule of thumb that you use? You know, when you're going through the minutes, the matters arising, sometimes there is a, 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 a section where you, the, a thin line, you're not sure, should it come under matters arising or should it be a new item on the agenda? Is there a rule of thumb or any recommendation you would have? Okay, so you have your agenda. And, and let's say there are 10 items on the agenda, one of which is going to be, so, okay, I'm gonna speak for my club. We look at the minutes from the last meeting and then matters arising from those minutes are very often covered under the different avenues of service. So club admin was supposed to uh, issue invoices for dues. So when club admin reports, they're not necessarily going either 
it could be a matter arising from the minutes or the club admin may just report on it. Depends, again, you don't want to double up the work. But then if club admin has a new issue to raise, so when you're dealing with matters arising, it is specific to the previous minutes. Any new matters. So between last board meeting and this board meeting, a member has resigned or you know, a member was arrested or whatever. You know, that's a separate issue. Membership may wish to raise it under new business because it cannot be a matter arising under membership from the previous minutes. You see what I'm saying? So the minutes of the previous meeting, only those issues are matters arising. So if I was dealing with membership, I may have membership under matters, ari matters arising from the minutes, and then I have my membership under new matters. You could either do them together as one membership report or have them twice on the agenda. Matters arising and then new business, new issues, membership. Is that clear? Or have I made it worse? Quite clear. Quite clear. <laughs> okay. So Last again, question. I mean, I, I just want to say one thing. I mean, we're rotary clubs, right? We're not banks or, you know what I mean? We don't have shareholders. or anything. So you don't have to really kill yourself to say, oh God, was that a new matter or an old matter? Or oh my God, I don't know. The most important thing is to make sure it's recorded properly somewhere. The decision made, the action to be done. That's all. If Even if you just have, you know, matters of the club or you call it, you don't have to have matters arising and new matters. It can just be membership issues. It could be club admin issues, whatever you're comfortable with. You don't necessarily have to be, I mean, the board should be a bit more formal, but the most important thing is to get the decisions recorded and action items noted. Great, thank you, PDG. Lara, your last question. Is there a sweet spot for the length of the minutes? Do you have a magic number? I want to know where my sweet spot is. Okay. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit late for that. But um, so my, uh, okay. Well, as I said to you, I don't generally like minutes more than about three or four pages. I find that a little bit onerous. It does depend on the meeting. I love appendices and I love tables. So I do minutes in table form because they're much more concise, easier to read. You can skip through much more quickly rather than pages and pages of narrative. And appendices mean that you don't have to have long minutes because you can put things in the appendices. So you can say, for example, the minutes could say we received a letter from DGE Leslie about pets. And then the appendix can be the letter. The minutes don't have to have all the content of the letter. Right. So the minutes can be short, but then you've got four or five appendices. So it, again, it depends how you, you know, you want to present the minutes to your board. I would say really board minutes shouldn't be more than four, I would say four pages max. Informal two. Great. But of course, I like the sound of you know, that. You can't, you can't use tiny like font size eight to get it onto four pages, right? It's, you know, normal, decent human being fonts. Yes. Twelve. At well, least. yeah, du double spaced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much, PDG Lara. Excellent Q&A session. If there are no more questions, I think my time with you is up and I will hand you back over to our moderator, Liz. Liz, there is a question in the chat that you may be able to address. Um, okay. Tanya is asking if we'll cover this in another session. What is the recommended handover period from old to new board? <clears throat> Perhaps PDG Lara could, uh, could take that question because it is it to me in my in my own sphere. I would rather have the new board members, uh, you know, come along to the board meetings from January, February. They should be, yeah. you know attending board meetings really handing over should really start in the second half of the of the new year so you get a sense of what happening what's happening at the meeting so that you know you know if some things is going to go over to your year how you will handle it but it has to have a handover it we have to have a handover some some clubs don't have any handing over persons just you know yeah. everything is just the files are just given to you but you really should have and i think the latest is april or or you know may yeah. Latest, I think, yeah. I mean, and Liz, there are some clubs you don't even get the files. People just disappear and you're just left to <laughs> sort of fend for yourself and try and figure it out, which is particularly difficult for the secretary 
because you should not be creating new minute templates and new project plans. These things are supposed to be embedded in the club, unless your club just started last week, right? This, these are things that are standard documents for a club. Um, but Tanya, who's from my club, that's why really and truly, as soon as PETS is done, which is April, mm -hmm. That's when the new board should start to engage the outgoing board, build its team, work on its strategy, so that July 1, you are ready to go because you've got your theme for the year, you've got your, you know, your plans and so on. So you should, in theory, have May and June at a minimum mm -hmm. to work yeah. with the, new board, the outgoing board, get your teams together, do your handover, and insist on a handover. You know, go to the, who, the incoming secretary should go to the outgoing secretary all now, as, as certainly when PETS is done and say, right, show me where the, the minutes are for the last year of board meetings or email them to me or, you know, where do you keep a note? Where's our strategic plan? Where All of these things, the secretary president elect at a minimum should be able to access. And I particularly, that's why the, the archiving of club documents is so critical. So one of the things you can start to do now is work with your current board, secretary, club admin, to, to begin the archiving process if it hasn't already begun, so that the incoming club leaders know where to find the documents, just in case there's no proper handover. But a minimum, I would say minimum three months. Yeah, absolutely. I think the earlier the better as well. Yeah, The absolutely. earlier the better. As a matter of fact, when you're actually doing your... Uh, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't say job duties, but when you're describing what the specific director has to do, second to last item or the last item should be a handing over of, the, of your role to the next role. So every area, every leadership area, every chair, every director should have that part, uh, you know, yeah. included as part of their duties, uh, handing over process. But that's I also think it's very why, important. why the shadowing is so critical. And I see Charles yes. has said, that at least two board meetings, mm -hmm. the incoming board should sit, even if they're just as observers, to see what the outgoing board is discussing, what are some of the issues, the hot topics, and so on. And of course, the presidents should know anyway, right? You've got to have at least three years strategic plan. This president, the next president, the next president should know overall what's happening. But at least two board meetings to sit and observe and, and be aware of what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things that I think that also, uh, and it comes up all the time, and I always have a, a disagreement with some persons, is that if somebody is absent from a meeting and now uh, we have to adopt the minutes and the person wasn't at the meeting and they're moving the motion and, you know, somebody else is second in the motion, what is your... your no, you absolutely to share, cannot. If you, just to no, share. No, no. if you were not at the meeting, you cannot. Right. If you were absent from the meeting, you cannot you can't. vote to move or second. Absolutely not. Okay, good. All right. So that's clear because I think that's I think that's in the always Bible, a difficulty you get. <laughs> that is scripture. Okay. I know that for a fact. <laughs> okay. Liz, if I may, just one Thank last you. last question. Sure. Go ahead, Lara. You know, in, in what happens in small clubs like ours, a lot of times is that the the new board, the incoming board is made up mostly of the outgoing board, perhaps yeah. in, in different roles. <laughs> so it, it does make it a tad difficult to have that um, shadowing and that um, transition meeting. We do try to have the last meeting of the year to be a meeting with both boards, but then what tends to happen, you would have, let's say, this, this year's secretary would be next year's club admin. So mm -hmm. you're, you're handing over a secretary, but then it, it it's just basically the same people in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. And that's true of, mo I think, uh, probably more than half of the clubs in our district are like that. And my club's like that. We have, we try and bring new people on the board every year because, as Liz said, you want people to serve, you want people to be leaders of the club. But you're always going to have probably half the board, at least, old members in some clubs. I mean, I remember when I visited um, Roach, when I was RI president's rep to Pennsylvania, there was a Rotary club there same president and board for 25 years and i just imagine i can't imagine any west indian club <laughs> any west indian president doing the same job like that for 25 years but they didn't even have elections they just every year this this president refused to go and so you know in some clubs it's just same old same old but we certainly try and you should try 
to bring new people on. You might even, for example, want to bring, have a Rotaractor as a sort of a, not an advisor, but as a sort of honorary director of your club to get them involved and inspire them to become Rotarians. So there's lots of things you can do. But yes, you are going to see a certain amount of duplication. What's important though, is that that person, if I was secretary and now I'm going to be club admin, I've got to be able to access last year's club admin files. Even though I know what would have happened and so on, I, I've got to know where to go. So there's still a handing over of the role, if not the person. It, it's if not the person. person okay. different, yeah, yeah. What, we're, what we, we, we have, the, we don't archive, but I guess we'll have to look into that. What we do is we hand over the access to the club emails that have all the documents and the email chains, et cetera. Is that good enough or would you still suggest the archiving on the cloud or however? I don't think it really matters what works best for your club, but what you should have is a documented protocol. So if the, if the protocol in your club is at, you know, a month before or two weeks before or the, you know, midnight, it's like when we give to the foundation, right? Midnight at the end of June, 30th of June, everybody's scrambling <laughs> to make their donations <laughs> to the Something foundation. Sometimes after, and you backdate it. <laughs> I know. So, um, you know, if, if that's your protocol, the secretary, you, you should have that documented as a, as I say, as a protocol or a standard operating procedure. My, my preference though would be to have a cloud archive um, that people can access. And remember, you can lock documents and have different levels of access so that I could go and look at them, but not edit them. You know, I can't share them, that sort of thing. So you can differentiate access, but email is, is not terribly safe. Not, not that you've got anything super confidential, but I think cloud archiving is definitely the way to go. And spend a bit of time as a club admin team, you know, looking into what's best for your club. And, and you know, these things are great when, for example, your club is celebrating its 40th anniversary. I mean, we had ours just before COVID. And it was a hell of a thing for me to find documents because, you know, Lennox had a magazine from 1985 and then Leslie had some box he thought with something some photos and Percy had a thing in his car you know and, and I would have loved to have done I mean thank god for COVID because I it was a nightmare trying to pull together 40 years of rotary should all be in the cloud photos events unveilings visit of the president of RI all those lovely things properly labeled right Paddy we know we have to label things properly but and then when anybody, you've got your 50th anniversary coming up, you go back and you go, wow, look, it's our first president and our first female member, or all of these lovely, you know, milestones. They're in the cloud. Not, and what we do now is we literally call in some poor old past president who's 110 asking if we could scramble through his house to look through his photo albums. In this day and age, that's not how Rotary Club should be operating. But it, it is a project that needs undertaking. That we need to put that in pets, Leslie, or for next year's pets, right? A whole session on archiving. A club runner, yes, Abraham saying you can use club runner. Hey, great. Liz, uh, over to you for real this time. <laughs> all right, Ray, thank you. Thank you so much. I think that was very interesting in terms of all areas. I think we, you know, you were able to capture quite a bit of information. And because, you know, the mention in, in, in terms of persons taking up leadership position or, or hesitant to take up leadership position as district trainer <laughs> incoming, I think we need to encourage our club to train persons, certainly to expose them to the roles and responsibilities, not just for the incoming board, but for persons who you see as potential leaders in your club, you expose them to what the roles require. You could do that at a club meeting. You can just discuss what does admin do or have the admin person share what they do so that the persons can get an idea because there are times when persons take on responsibilities because they think that this, this is a good, nice title, probably look good at my CV. And then they get into the role and realize, hey, this is a lot more than it than what it is. And they stay in that role because they want to keep the title. And then there yeah. are others who are who 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 don't know or who assume or see somebody having a difficulty and think, no, this is not something that I really want to do. So I think um, guys, training and and you know developing that resource pool is important for some. And I just I just want to make a point, Liz, and I'm so glad you raised that. The first time I was asked to be secretary of my club. The president-elect 
we, he and I had a conversation and I was gung-ho, I was happy to do it. And he said, so, you know, this is what the secretary's job involves, the minutes and archiving and so on, lovely. He said, and I'll also need you to, you know, pick up my dry cleaning and go and get documents from my office. And I went, hang on, hang on. I'm not your secretary, I'm club secretary. And so he had a, compl I mean, I was supposed to pick his kids up from school, all kind of craziness. I said, no, I'm not doing that. And if that's what you think a club secretary is, then I will not be your club secretary. And I went on and I did PR instead. And then I was secretary a couple of years later for a president who understood the role of the secretary. So the president oh, needs no. to be very clear. What, no, he wasn't pranking me, Leah, trust me. I, if I told you the name of this person, you understand how it all unraveled in Trinidad history after that. But this is somebody who thought that as club secretary, I was going to be his PA. And I'd be, I don't okay. know, picking his kids up from school and booking his holidays and things. Oops. So the president needs to give a lot of support to the secretary. But understand, we all have jobs. You know, we have lives with families with other commitments. So it, it's important to support each other and have very clear guidelines to what the job involves. Yep. Yeah. And that, that too, I think too, sometimes the, the secretary comes under a lot of pressure because let's say service committee or even fundraising is, is having an event. So they would issue Madam Secretary or whoever is the secretary, Mr. Secretary, please write a letter. It is not the secretary's responsibility to sit down and draft letters for every single committee. The secretary has to see those letters. The secretary has to sign those letters. But it, it, you know, the directors really need to help. This is not a paid job. It is not a paid job and everybody is busy. And the person who's actually requesting that letter probably is more familiar with what it is that they want to say in that letter. It's the best person to put that draft together and send it to the secretary. So the secretary, you know, there are times when in clubs I've seen secretaries overburdened with every letter, every letter that wants, everybody wants to send out a letter. Say, secretary, write a letter, write a letter. No, the, the directors have a responsibility too, just like you do with budgeting, you prepare aspects for the budget. The same with, with, with um, writing letters as well, doing your draft and sending it to the secretary. All right. Thank you, Lara. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think it was very, um, we've seen the comments in terms of persons, uh, you know, really clued into the discussion, the questions, I think really also brought out a lot of things that may not necessarily have been mentioned in, in your uh, presentation, but certainly will add to, to benefit everybody who is on the call tonight. But I just really wanted to, so, don't run away, um, um, PDG Laro. <laughs> I just wanted to remind uh, those president elect and secretary elects that the, the president's toolkit has inside a learning support contract. And the reason why we have a learning support contract is not that we want to bind you, bound you legally for anything. The whole purpose of that learning support contract is for you to, first of all, would have been in the first instance, in the first um, day, identify what are your objectives, uh, what do you expect out of this program, and then it goes on to ask what, uh, what did you gain from this program. And the third thing is what do you going to do, what are you going to do differently when you get back into or go into your role, and what resources and support do you need from your club, from the district, from the AG, some of those things that you need to really capture there. And it will be signed off by, it should be signed off by your AG as well, and it comes back to us. But on the last day of our PET session, we will go into a little bit more detail on that. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that that learning support contract is really meant to help to, to guide you, certainly to prepare you for the role and certainly to provide any support you need in that particular role for both secretary as well as the, the president-elect. And you can actually use it with your directors as well so that you get everybody on board in terms of what it is they need to do, what they want to do, what their expectations. When you have your training, it's something you can actually use. Not a legal document, but we just wanted to provide some guidance in that regard. Having said that, let me move on to our conclusion. Well, I'll ask, um, well, first of all, AB, can you put up the poll, please, while, while the DGE Leslie concludes the session tonight. So please uh, yes, take I'll, part in I'll the poll. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Um, DG, could I invite you to say the vote of thanks and close our session tonight? Over to you. Thank you, thank you Liz. And uh, my fellow Rotarians, just before I go on to thank him, Lara, for presenting tonight, I, I'm going to use executive privilege here, and I would like to consider 
consider what is happening in the world today with the Ukraine situation. And I would like to appeal to all of us as much as possible to try to make a contribution to the disaster relief fund through the Rotary Foundation. Okay, so this serious thing is a serious situation. I would like us to consider that as we leave here tonight. So PG Lara, excellent as usual. Uh, we know you are the guru on these things. You are the perfectionist in terms of writing minutes and saying the right things, reporting the right things. You are exceptional. Thank you very much for spare, sharing that time with us and really uh, locking into our secretaries, especially to, to give them the guideline, guidelines on, on writing minutes and, and recording minutes and all the particulars concerned with, with meeting, meeting details. So thank you very, very much for that, really appreciate it. And really would like to, would like, thank you for your support for being with us, as you always do. Very much appreciated. So thank you very much. Uh, to our district training team, fantastic evenings program. And we do hope that it was really, really informative to our, our listening PEs and SEs. It's all for you. Uh, we are here to really ensure that you get a proper foundation as you go forward to lead your clubs come July 1. So I, I would repeat what Liz has told you, but please proceed and, and update yourselves with whatever information there is that you can really make next year, a year in which we can imagine how we do things to improve Rotary, improve lives, make the world a better place. Um, thank you again to all the participants. Thank you for the IT team led by Sean for starting us on time and we are ending on time. 8.35 is the close off. We are a few minutes ahead. So um, everyone have a good evening and we'll see you on Saturday. Thanks very much.